Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be discussing all the signings and trades that happened between uh, July 2nd and July 4th, Sundays 2 through 4 of Free Agent Frenzy. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Internet Hockey Channel. Now I know I posted a couple of videos discussing how things went on day one for the uh, free agency for the Eastern Conference, for the Western Conference, also how things went on the trade market. So I'm going to be doing a video here recapping days two through four. Uh, there was only a couple of trades. I was originally going to do days two through three, but there was only a, a couple of signings yesterday as well. So I'm going to combine days two through four, going through all each and every signing, seeing what happened for all of these uh, players who got signed there and what sort of future could be holding. So we start on July 2nd. Uh, there were, I think, 28 signings on July 2nd. So to start with, uh, Matt Hollowell was signed to a one-year league minimum deal by the New York Rangers. A uh, solid depth defenseman. Uh, gone to a couple of NHL games for the Maple Leafs last year. Wasn't qualified as an RFA. Uh, went to free agency. He signed with the Rangers. I think he should be definitely a good AHL defender, but should definitely be a call-up option. Uh, Mark Johnston signed a two-year league minimum deal with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, depth forward, uh, shouldn't be more than like an AHL player. Could be a call-up, but I'll just say once again, most likely an AHL player. Uh, we talked about this in our last video. Uh, Evan Rodriguez signs a four-year deal with the AAV of $3 million with the Florida Panthers. Once again, just like I said before, uh, should replace Duclair in the lineup. Could be a center, could be a winger, very versatile forward. And he's going to be a really good player there for the Florida Panthers. Uh, looking at another Florida Panthers signing, they signed forward William Lockwood uh, to a two-year league minimum deal. Lockwood was a solid uh, bottom six forward, high AHL level forward for the uh, uh, Canucks and New York Rangers last year. Uh, he does have some NHL experience, and I think he could be a solid fourth-line forward. So depending on how Florida does, he's either going to be a solid fourth-line forward or he's going to start in the AHL, and I think he's going to be one of their first call-ups. So Lockwood, good sign there for the Panthers. The Colorado Avalanche re-signed RFA uh, goalie Justus and Union to a one-year league minimum deal. That's a solid deal, and Union looks like he could be a really good third stringer next year, so a d good addition there for the uh, Avalanche to keep on Union. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers signed Benjamin Gleason to a two-year league minimum deal, so once again, another decent signing. Uh, Gleason, AHL forward, could be a call-up, once again, most likely AHL defenseman. Uh, on top of that, you got Kyle Yamamoto in Seattle and Tyler Bertuzzi in Toronto. We talked about these two signs before. Yamamoto, one year, $1.5 million deal. A uh, solid middle six forward. Could definitely be a solid third line forward for the Kraken next year and try and improve his game so that he can still be a really productive forward. Uh, Bertuzzi in Toronto should improve that top six in Toronto immensely. He's a physical forward. Tough to play against forward. He fit perfectly in with Boston uh, last towards the end of last year in the playoffs. So I think he'll be a really good uh, boost for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And on top of being a really good point producer, probably putting up 30 goals, maybe 60 points, uh, he should be a really good addition to that top six. So another really good sign there. Uh, the Calgary Flames signed two players. UFA Colton Pullman to a one-year league minimum deal and UFA Dryden Hunt to a two-year league minimum deal. Both these guys were in the Flames organization last year. Hunt was acquired at the deadline. I uh, didn't see any NHL action, but I could see him be a solid bomb 6-4 for the Flames next year. Pullman's a really good AHL defender. I expect him to probably continue in the AHL at this point in time, but he eventually I think he could be a good solid third pair defenseman. So good signings there for the Flames. The Capitals re-signed Dylan McElrath to a two-year league minimum deal. Uh, once again, another solid AHL f defender who could get some NHL opportunities uh, via call-ups, but I think for the most part he'll be an AHL defender. Uh, Radim Zohorna, who spent a lot of time in different places last year, goes back to Pittsburgh on a one-year league minimum deal. Once again, solid AHL player who could be a bomb six forward. So I think uh, he's most likely going to be an AHL player, but I could easily see him also be like a fourth-line forward for the Penguins. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes signed Montana Onya Buick, to a two-year $950,000 ELC, so uh, probably won't make the NHL roster this year, probably will still need some time to develop in the uh, juniors. Uh, he's a right-shot defenseman who I think eventually could be a good third-pair defenseman, so a really good sign there for the Coyotes. On top of that, the Coyotes did sign uh, John Leonard uh, to a uh, one-year league minimum deal. Leonard's a decent bomb 6'4", he could definitely play the AHL level as well, so I think it's a really good addition for the Coyotes to sign a solid bomb 6'4". Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning signed forward Calvin DeHaan to a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, DeHaan was a really good third-pair defenseman for the Hurricanes last year, uh, wasn't brought back, so he should definitely be a good solid third-pair, maybe seventh defenseman on the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins add some more goaltending depth by getting Magnus Halberg on a one-year uh, $785,000 deal. Halberg's a decent goaltender. He showed that he can be at least a backup last year. I think he'll most likely be like a third or fourth stringer at the AHL level this year, given the fact that uh, Penguins still have Jerry as their starter and Nadelkovic or Smith as one of those two as their backup. So I would expect Halberg to most likely be the fourth stringer. But due to injuries or the way some players play, he could even get it to the backup role. So, so that's a really good sign there for the Penguins. Uh, the Dallas Stars signed Gavin Bayreuther to a one-year league minimum deal. Bayreuther showed last year he can be a solid third-pair defenseman. Uh, Dallas is a little bit more of a deeper blue line than Columbus had last year. So I do wonder if Bayreuther maybe gets a shot uh, on the third pair. But I could also see him be an AHL four defenseman. So definitely think that's a really good sign there for Dallas. Uh, on top of that... Uh, you've got Christian Fisher in Detroit, signs a one-year, $1.125 million deal. Uh, Fisher, solid bomb six floor, as I said in my last video. Uh, I think it can definitely help that Red Wings team. So that's a good addition there for the Red Wings. Uh, Jordan Osterley sends a one-year $925,000 deal with the Flames. Uh, solid third-pair defenseman. Uh, could replace a guy like Michael Stone, who left at this point in time. Uh, could be a good, solid third pair defenseman or seventh defenseman so that's a really good pickup there for the Flames. The Canadians get Leah Sanderson on a one-year league minimum deal, uh, former seventh overall pick in 2017. Anderson at this point is most likely a bottom end forward. I would most likely say he's going to be playing in the AHL. We're not surprised at all if he got some uh, lower end NHL options like maybe playing on the fourth line but I would expect him to be an AHL player. Uh, Joe Hickett signs a one-year league minimum deal with the Kings, most likely an AHL uh, defenseman uh, could get some initial opportunity especially with the Kings having a little bit weaker depth on the blue line but still I think he'd most likely be on the AHL side. Uh, Gerald Mayhew signs a one-year deal in Florida league minimum deal. Uh, definitely Mayhew's a decent bomb six forward most likely an AHL forward but I do think he could be maybe challenging for like a bomb six role in Florida. Uh, Jack Johnson resigns in Colorado on a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, should continue to be a good, solid third-pair defenseman for the Avalanche. He was last year. He was the year before. So that's a really good addition there. Uh, Matthew Phillips sends a one-year league minimum deal with the Capitals. I think that's a really good deal for him. He should be a solid bomb six forward. He's done really well at the AHL level. Couldn't get into the Flames NHL roster. So I do think he should be a good, solid bomb six forward for the Capitals. Uh, Max Domi. Signs a one-year, $3 million deal with the Maple Leafs. As we've talked about, uh, Domi's versatile. He can play center. He can play wing. He should be able to fit in that middle six role and bring some bite to that Toronto Maple Leafs team. So that's a really good sign there. Uh, Akito Heroes, who was an RFA with the Vancouver Canucks, signs a two-year deal with AAV of $788,000. Uh, Heroes had a really good showing towards the end of the season after the Canucks signed him. Uh, he looks like he can be a solid third-pair defenseman. Maybe playing with a guy like uh, Ian Cole. Those two could be a really good uh, duo on the third pair, so that's a really good deal for the Canucks. On top of that, you have Martin Pospisil signing a one-year league window deal with the Flames. A decent bomb six forward, uh, not going to probably contend very much for an uh, NHL role, but could be a good depth player and should be a good depth AHL forward, so that's a good signing. And then Yuri Patera, who is an RFA, sends a one-year league window deal with the Golden Knights. Uh, Patera has been a good fourth stringer for the Golden Knights over the past couple of years. Uh, has gone into a couple of NHL games due to the vast amount of injuries the Knights have had on the goaltending side. Done all right, so I think the one-year league minimum deal is fantastic for Patera and the Golden Knights. So that's all the signings that happened on July 2nd. Uh, going into July 3rd, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers signed defenseman Mark Stahl to a one-year $1.1 million deal. That's a solid deal. There's still a lot of talk that Tony D'Angelo will be moved at some point. We already got rid of Par Overov and Braun retired, so Stahl should definitely be a solid third-pair defenseman for the Philadelphia Flyers and could be dealt at some point uh, at the deadline if the Flyers aren't doing too well. Uh, the uh, Washington Capitals signed Alex Lamoges to a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, Limoges, once again, AHL forward, who could get an NHL call-up, but most likely will be an AHL forward. So, some good depth there for the Capitals. Uh, the Maple Leafs send Dylan Gambrell to a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, Gambrell's shown in the past he can be a solid fourth-liner, so it would not be surprising if he got a fourth-line role, or maybe even like a 13th uh, uh, forward role. But I do think he could also be in the AHL. So that's a solid uh, depth addition for the Maple Leafs. Nathan Todd with the Sounds of Sharks sends a two-year league minimum deal. A decent center, most likely will be an AHL forward. Uh, could get a call up to the NHL role, but could be an AHL forward. I think he'll most likely play in the AHL. Uh, Detroit sends Nolan Stevens to a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, Calgary sends Brady Lyle to a one-year league minimum deal. Both those guys are most likely AHL uh, players. Uh, Stevens, AHL forward for the Wings, especially with the Wings' depth right now. Uh, the Flames, same thing. Pretty deep at the defensive end, so I think Lyle will probably be a AHL defenseman. 
Both, I think, will have shots to come up in the lineup and be a really good player there. So those are some pretty good signings. Uh, RFA, Raphael Javier Pernard, signed a two-year deal with AAV of $1.1 million. Pernard showed last year, uh, towards the end of the season, he can be a really lethal player. I think that's a really good contract. I think he fits in their top nine this year, especially with all the guys that the uh, Canadians left, uh, like Drew and, and some of those other guys. So I do think that uh, Javier Pernard's deal is really good, and he should be able to fit in really well in the middle six. Uh, Nicholas Camano, who was an RFA, and Scott Reedy, who was an RFA, both with the Dallas Stars, and one year league minimum deals with the Stars. Uh, Reedy, Camano, both most likely will be AHL forwards, but they do have NHL experience. I could see him be solid bomb six forwards, especially with the Stars losing a couple players, but for the most part, I think those two will both be uh, solid AHL players for the Dallas Stars. Uh, the National Predators signed Jasper Weatherby to a one-year league minimum deal. Weatherby's had some NHL opportunities. He's a solid bomb six forward, so I do think uh, with a, a little bit of a weaker team like Nashville, he could get a fourth-line role. But also wouldn't surprise me if he was in the AHL next year. Uh, Axel Janssen for Jalabi sent a two-year league minimum deal back with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, he showed last year he can be a solid fourth-liner, so I'm expecting to probably continue to be a fourth-line forward. If not, then a spare forward at the NHL level. Uh, Will Butcher signed with the Pittsburgh Penguins on a one-year league minimum deal. He used to be a solid NHL defenseman. He's most likely an NHL defenseman now, but I could see him be one of the first uh, Penguins players to be called up if there were injuries. So I definitely like that sign there by Pittsburgh. Uh, and then you've also got Griffin Mandel, who signs an entry-level contract, one year, $790,000 with the Canes. Once again, he should continue to develop. Uh, he's a solid defenseman. I think in time it could be a good third-pair defenseman maybe for the Hurricanes, but for the time being, he'll probably have to uh, continue to develop, so I don't expect much from him next year. And then you also have Connor Carrick signing a one-year league minimum deal with the Seattle Kraken. Uh, once again, Kraken have a pretty deep defense. I would expect Carrick to most likely continue to be the AHL defenseman. I could see him, though, be one of their first call-ups. So some pretty good signings there on July 3rd. And now we're going to the last few here on July 4th. Uh, Travis Hamnick sends a two-year $1.1 million AAV deal with the Ottawa Senators to go back there. Hamnick has shown uh, he's been really well over the past couple of years with the Ottawa Senators. I do think he has a spot there on maybe like the third pair to continue to play with the uh, Sens. Uh, Derek Pouliot sends a one-year league minimum deal with the Stars. Uh, at one point, he was a good NHL defender. For now, he's probably an AHL defender. I could see him get some call-ups, but for the most part, I think uh, Pouliot will be a AHL defenseman. Uh, Kale Clegg sends a one-year league minimum deal with the Buffalo Sabres. Not too bad of a signing there. Uh, Clegg, decent uh, third-pair defenseman. I'll expect him to probably start in the AHL, but I could see him definitely be at the NHL level as a call-up uh, if they run into injuries. Martin Ferrari signs a three-year deal with the AAV of $2.675 million. So that's a solid deal for the Caps RFA. Uh, Ferrari's fit in really well in the top four over the past couple of years with the Washington Capitals, uh, mostly playing with a guy like John Carlson. So I think it's a fantastic deal for the Capitals. And now have another solid top four defenseman for the next couple of years. Uh, Oliver Rodrigue with the Edmonton Oilers, who is another RFA, sends a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, Rodrigue, not at the point yet where he can be an NHL goalie. I think eventually he could be like a backup, maybe 1B. But for now, he's still a solid third stringer. And to sign him to that sort of a deal, I think is really good for the Oilers. Uh, Mitchell Stevens signs back with the Canadians on a one-year league minimum deal. Not too bad there. Uh, Stevens was a really good AHL forward uh, last year for the Canadians. I'll expect him to do sort of the same role this year, uh, sort of an AHL forward. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks signed Robert Haig to a one-year league minimum deal. Haig's a decent defender uh, with the Ducks' lack of defense. I could see maybe even make the uh, roster in like the third pair, so that's a decent sign for the Ducks. And Haig, if the C Ducks are not doing too well, could be a trade option at the deadline. And then the Capitals resend Riley Suter, who was an RFA on a one-year league and one deal. So Suter, once again, AHL forward at this point in time, could eventually be a good bomb six forward, but for now I would say AHL forward could be a call-up option, but for the most part, I think he'd be an AHL forward. So those are the 50 signings that have happened over these past three days uh, around the NHL. Uh, so some pretty good signings there. Uh, we've also got two trades to discuss. Uh, none of them are overly significant. Uh, the first one we had was a defensive swap between uh, the Winnipeg Jets and the San Jose Sharks. As the Winnipeg Jets acquired Artyom Kinezaev from the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Leon Guanke. Uh, both defensemen, Kinezaev and Guanke, are most likely AHL defenders. I think Kinezaev has a little bit more upside, and Kinezaev could, I think, challenge a little bit more for an AHL role, but both are AHL players. Uh, Guanke was a signing rights trade, so he's still in RFA right now with the Townsend Sharks. Uh, 
But I do think those were some pretty good uh, deals. Just swapping some minor league uh, defensemen, hoping they can benefit from the change of scenery. I do think Kinzaev has a little bit more chance of making the NHL than Guanke, but the Sharks' defense is a little bit more weaker. So I definitely like this swap for both sides. I think the Jets do win this side, uh, just getting the fact they get the little bit more experienced player. And then the one that we talked about in our last video was uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning acquire a 2024 seventh round pick from the Minnesota Wild in exchange for Patrick Maroon with 20% of his contract retained, and Maxim Kajovic. So, like I said before, Tampa apparently needs a little bit more cap space. I'm surprised they moved on from Maroon. He's a solid bomb six forward, but I think it's a really good move for the uh, Bolts to clear up a little bit more cap space. Kajovic was probably never going to play in the NHL with the Bolts, so they move a couple of players. They get a 7th round pick in return, so it's like their second 7th round pick they've acquired in the last little bit, so that's a solid move there for the Bolts. For the Wild, they get Maroon. We know they lost Reeves. They get Maroon at $500,000 cheaper, which is perfect for them. Uh, Maroon should go straight into being like a Saul Bomb 6'4 for them uh, and really help that team uh, be a little more physical next year. Uh, Kadrich should be a solid AHL player next year. I think he still has some potential to be like a fourth line forward at NHL level. So hopefully he can uh, realize that potential with the Wild. But I wouldn't expect too much there for the uh, Wild uh, next year. But still, I think Maroon to the Wild really improves that bottom six. And the Bolts are able to get a seventh round pick for moving Maroon. So, once again, that's all the signings and trades that happened between days two and four through free agency. Definitely love to hear you think. Uh, what sort of deals do you think were the best over this period of time? Uh, did you like the two trades? Or do you think the t some teams could have done better? Also, what love do you think of on where some of these uh, free agents were still left go. Uh, where does Tatar go? Where does Dumba go? Where does Tarasenko go? Where does Kane go? Where does Bear go? Where does Foot go? Where does Sunkfist go? Where do some of these other guys go? Love to hear what you think down in the comments on where you think all these guys will be ending up. But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video if you really liked it. Remember to subscribe down below. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So I'll leave the link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.